Greetings, friends, hands of darkness, servants of the Emperor, and loyalists and cultists of the dark side, and welcome back to our archives. I have been expecting you. Today, we are going to be taking a trip to two devastated planets. Both of these planets were once namesakes in terms of the dark side of the Force, with both of them being claimed as some of the greatest dark side worlds in history, one of them even bearing host to the primary ruling world of Emperor Vitiate, until he opted for Grom and Kars after its decimation. These planets are both Zyost and Nathema. You might have heard of Nathema more than Zyost. Both of these worlds were ancient Sith worlds, with Nathema being under the rule of Lord Drama. Lord Dramas was Emperor Vitiate's biological father, and the one that Vitiate would later strip of his sanity and his Force connection, feeding off his essence and power for the next millennia. Zyos was another ritual and planet that was conducted many years into Sith Emperor Vitiate's regime. Zyos was the planet in the Unknown Regions. It was an ancient Sith world in Sith space. However, today we must divert our attention to Emperor Vitiate. We have covered Vitiate a lot here on this channel, and he is one of our favourite topics to cover. So today, we are going to be analysing Vitiate's plethora of Force techniques and abilities, his lightsaber combat skills, and his millennia and a half long of immense Force practitioners and techniques, his abilities that truly made him the most powerful Sith Lord of all time. We are going to be analysing and fully immersing ourselves in the pure malevolence of Vitiate, Valkorion, the Immortal Emperor, and figuring out which one of his abilities is truly the most powerful. To fully kickstart this, we are going to have to journey back to 5100 BBY, 100 years before Vitiate's birth. 100 years before Vitiate's birth, the rule of Nathema passed to Lord Drathma, who eventually had, many years later, an affair with a poor farm woman who saw her Tenebrae, Tenebrae, now 13 years old, after stripping his father of sanity, travelled to the High Council of the Sith and confronted Marco Ragnos, the ruling Sith at the time, who acknowledged the teenager's ambitions and power and gave him the title of Emperor of Vitiate. Vishut then returned to Nathema and spent much of the next century delving into dark side techniques and abilities, allowing his power to stay in tow while he watched as the other Sith Lords foolishly engaged in the Great Hyperspace War under the lead of Naga Sadao and the second in command chain of Ludo Kresh, unleashing their military might before being decimated by the Jedi. Vishit then conducted a ritual after the Sith were forced into hiding after their catastrophic defeat in the final battle of the Great Hyperspace War. Vishit's ritual was called the Nathemic Ritual. The Ritual of Nathema was a ritual that took reportedly 10 days to complete, combining alchemy, sorcery, and magic all together in an intertwinement of pure malevolent Sith energy, allowing the dark side energies to converse upon this one world. Vitiate entranced over 8,000 Sith Lords, and upon their arrival on the planet, bound their will to his, undomitable will, allowing them and making them unable to leave or to resist against his immense powers. Vitiate then proceeded to complete the 10-day ritual, with the ritual unleashing a wave of destructive dark side energy that billowed across the planet, absorbing every single shred of life and force energy, transferring it all to Vitiate. This is primarily the reason why Vishit became immortal, as while his physical body continued to decay due to his immense dark side malice, his spirit was eternal. Now, let's move to Zyles. Vishit's destruction of Zyles was achieved when the ritual of Sith magic to consume all life on the world. Upon the ritual's completion, the Sith magic expanded across the globe as a wave of destructive energy, and literally swept the force and life energy from the targeted planet in less than a minute killing all living beings instantly and transforming their life force into the power of Vitiate. We know that Vitiate intended to use this ritual on a galactic scale in order to consume all life in the galaxy and thereby assured he would never be defeated and would become a god of darkness, similarly to the sun or Abeloth, but perhaps even more powerful. Zyos was one step closer to that grand scheme. Zakul and the Eternal Empire, his most powerful empire, lay in wild space outside the known galaxy, 
It is still unknown how his plans as Valkyrie fit into his scheme to consume all life in the galaxy. K-O-T-F-E and K-O-T-T-T didn't tie back to their storylines. After K-O-T-E-T, we can only understand how and why Valkorion drew the Outlander into his clutches and manipulated the Outlander to execute his schemes and plots. How Zeiss really fit into the Eternal Empire's grand plans was not fully explained. That said, there are a number of speculations that could be offered, and a numerous amount of theories that I have conjectured, and many I have mustered. Here are a few that I have. Sakul and the Eternal Empire were where Valkoria and Vichia intended to rule as an all-powerful, undefeatable empire. The Eternal Fleet was a fleet that was operated by sentient droids, the most powerful droids in the galaxy meaning that their calculations could nearly be perfect every single time, allowing them to be more powerful and skilled than even the greatest strike team. Not even Anakin Skywalker and Han Solo times a thousand could match the piloting skills of these dro- sentient droids. These represented a combination of the power of the dark and the light side of the Force, focused on the service worship of him as a god emperor. Valkorion saw this as much more far-reaching and dominating than the Sith Empire could ever be, hence why he abandoned it after the hero of Tython defeated him. The Sith Empire and the Galactic Republic would be sacrificed to his own immense power after the Eternal Empire ravaged the galaxy, leading a wave of decimation through it, and to seal his dominance over the Eternal Empire and its thralls slash dependencies through the ritual. Valkorion as the second theory suggests, plan to use the Outlander not only to take the next step in his path of immortality, but to also provide the next step in his larger scheme, a vessel of power to greatly enhance its own and provide the last ingredient needed to perform the galactic scale ritual. Valkorion needed the Zyos ritual to realise this stage, and to regenerate himself after his catastrophic defeat at the hands of the hero of Tython. Living in the mind and brooding in the mind of the Outlander, projecting his power through the Outlander and slowly twisting him to his ends, all beyond death. The power from the destruction of Zeiss is a failsafe that will allow Valkorion to address any reversal suffered if his plan for Zakul and Eternal Empire personally and temporarily fail. This means that Valkorion would ever Dently go to any planet that he required and just absorb the life that is out of it. Now fully mastered the Nathemic ritual, he would be able to travel to this planet, absorb all the life energy that is born there, and completely regenerate himself, turning himself back into the immortal emperor. However, there is one last theory I'd like to address, and it's the fact that Valkorion did not expect to be defeated by the hero of Tython. Valkorion is arrogant, but rightly so. There were few in the entire galaxy who ever rivaled his pure force mastery. No Sith, in my personal opinion, ever achieved the rank of power that he did, with only a few Jedi, if any, ever achieving his ranking of mastery. This is not low evidence to consider that Valkorion did not expect to be defeated by the hero of Tython, and needed the power of Zyas to reverse that failure, allowing him to regenerate himself and re-engross his body in the dark side energies, allowing him to continue his reign as an immortal emperor. I suspect that beyond the being a plot device to introduce some mystery leading up to Kyote Fe, the Zyos cycle may provide some way for Valkorion to re-emerge in a possible expansion of Star Wars The Old Republic, or a related non-canon game. Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes is a glimpse of what the next gaming franchise might look like. One note I'd like to make is I expect KOTET to be the last major expansion of Star Wars The Old Republic game series, unless the latest changes manage to bring an unexpected upswing of new pages to the MMO. Well, my friends, what did you think of this video and the th- four theories that I have garnered, roughly deducing the full might and wrath of the Nathemic ritual? This ritual was performed twice to devastating effect. And if Vitiate had have managed to pull it off on the entire galaxy, there would have been none who would have been able to rival the wrath of the immortal emperor. Goodbye, my friends. This is where we part ways, and I'll see you brooding in the darkness of Nathema.